Welcome guys to this video tutorial. I will show you now how to create PHP sessions in a really simple way. You can use this in any system you build from now on. Let's get started. I already created this company folder and I have this validate.js library in there. I will put a link below so you can download the whole solution after you have finished watching this video. Let's start creating a file, profile, PHP. The idea of this file is that it will display the data for the user. So here I will say profile and over here an h1 welcome. Welcome and then the username and then the password. So I will save it. I will point to that website localhost company profile.php. Welcome, the username, and the last name, the name and the last name. This should not be accessible to anyone that has not successfully logged in. So the idea is that in order for you to protect any website you want, you have actually to check if the user is locked. Check if the user is locked. To do that in PHP, you start session start, that's a function. You must have this line always, always, always before you actually check for the session. So I'm going to say if there's no session, meaning that the user has not logged in, I will take the user to the profile page, to the index page. So I will say location index.php page. And this index page, by the way, is the login page that we will build in a second. So I reload. And it took me back to the index page. You can see up here index, but the object is not found because I do not have that page. Let's build it. Index.php. This could be the login page. The index page just has the HTML code in it. And I will keep it really, really simple. I will just create a form in the index page. Let's test it for now. Now I am in the index. I will call this login. The action, I could leave it empty. I don't like doing that. I actually like to be really explicit about it. So the action will be the index.php whenever I actually submit the form via a post. If you leave this empty, if you do not write method post, by default, it will be a get. And it's a pretty bad idea to do that because you will be passing the email and the password and that is sensitive data. So use a post. Inside the form, I will create a div. And inside this div, I will create an inner div. It says, it says email, reload, you can see that. And then I will create an input box. The input box will be for the email. So I say reload. I will give it a name because I know that I will be posting this input box. I will call it email. This is the variable name that post will get after I submitted the form. I will give a max length to it to be 100. That's an attribute from HTML that will constrain the length of the mail. Nothing really happens when I set that on. I will copy this and I will do the exact same thing for the password. Password. Let's say that we set this system to work with a minimum of four and max 20 characters. You decide that. It doesn't really matter. We have the mail. We have, this will be password actually. This is the name of the variable we will be passing via post. And we need a button actually. Button. Let's call it login. Save it. Reload. When I click on login, if you pay, you pay attention to the title bar, it actually reloads because I'm posting. Let's go now to the page up here. Up here, we're going to open the PHP tags. We're going to close them and we are going to validate the data. Validate. I will create a function. This function doesn't have a name. I'm not going to call it manually. I'm actually going to create it as a self-invoking function, self-invoking function, or some people call it self-executing function. This function just will run by itself 
To do that, I will open the parentheses right there. I will close it right there. And then I will do opening and closing again of the parentheses, ending up with a semicolon. If I do that, and then I set some O's in here, as soon as I reload the page, you will see the O's coming there, right? Login, 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 right. So this will allow me to do defensive programming because if something goes wrong inside this function, I will just return and the return will mean that I will leave this piece of code and the computer will take me automatically to that piece of code. Let's do that. If the first check will be if the user has not posted anything, and this I'm missing the dollar sign in there. If the user has not posted anything, I will return. This means that if the user doesn't give me an email or doesn't give me a password, the system will return. That's the post syntax. Save. Nothing really happens. If I go here and then I say echo the O's, I will see the O's because actually I am posting something. I am posting a name with the variable email and I'm actually posting this name with the variable password. So I'm posting the email variable and the password variable. If I take this away, let's pretend that we forgot to write that. I save. Actually, you can see the system doesn't recognize the post. Even though I said that I will post this form, since I don't have the elements name here and name there, nothing gets posted and PHP says, well, you forgot to post something. Therefore, I set them on. So now you can see I'm posting. Once I have posted, I will check if the email is valid. If, if something goes wrong, I will return automatically. I will break this into lines and then I will start checking if the email is valid. First of all, let's check if that email is not empty. So if it is empty, the post email, I will return. Empty, return. Or if the email is not valid. So we say and or if filter var, this is a function that will validate the email. I will take this email and then I will validate it. Filter var email. So I'm doing this. If the email is empty or if the email is not valid, I will return. That's the piece of code. We can break this into lines so you can better see it. I will say, I will try to log in. Nothing really happens because I'm not echoing anything. Over here, we just echo here. You can see why I'm in the code. Login. I never get to here because even though I'm posting, my email is empty. So I will do something like ace. And it says here, call to the fun function filter var. We can see the error. I already passed this here, but this filter bar function doesn't exist. Filter bar. I reload. I try to log in again. The email is empty. And I check if the email is valid. If this was correct, I should see here. I will provide this with the correct email. I see here. Validation has passed the email. Now I will check for the password. Exact same thing. If it's empty, the password variable, remember guys, this email and that password is referring to the input box with the name email and the input box with the name password. So we check it. If the password is empty or I cannot check that the password is a valid email, but I will check the length of the password. So I will say strlang, and then I will take the password field, the value of it, and I will check it if it's less than four. Let's say that we said four minimum, being the minimum length of the characters. If the password is less than four, or if the password is greater than 20, copy this, and then I will say, or if the password, is actually great, sorry guys, greater than 20. 
I will return. I save it. The system is complaining ab about something also here. Instead of trying to debug it, I will just delete it. And then I will redo it. Or str length password that will be the post is less than four. Closing the parentheses there. Now I fixed it. I could have spotted that right away before, but I forgot about the parentheses. Or and then I will do the opposite, the max of it. If the password max would be 20. If that's the case, I will return. So finally, I will just echo here. And then now I will do some O's. I say, click, nothing happens. I will provide the system with a valid email and a password that contains only two characters. I could not log in. Valid email now again. And a password with four characters. Then I am in the letters O. I got here. Still, I'm going to point again to profile so you can see how the session actually runs. Profile.php, it takes me back to the login form, to the index page. So pretend here, pretend that there's a match. Pretend there is a match in the database. We connected to the database, we found a match. Then we will get most likely an associative array for a user. I will just create this array hard-coded. That it will be one. The name of the user will be A. And the last name of the user will be I want to put this inside the session so the user is locked. So use a session. Session start, always, always, always use session start or else the system will not work. And once you want to put something in the session, you can say that the session has a variable name, name called user. And the user variable actually contains the user that I just hard coded up there. This already created a session in the system. Save it, two S's, session start. Once the session has been registered, we can say that we want to take the user, the successfully logged user, to the page called profile.php. We save it, we try to log in, nothing happens. I will provide an email, which is valid, a password, which is, let's say, valid. And then when I click login, I go to the profile page. The profile page checks if there is a session. Since there is a session, this line never gets executed because this line says if there is no session, but there is a session, therefore we display welcome A and B. Let's delete this A and B for now, save and test it. It says welcome. Now, I would like to demonstrate that A and B could come from the session. If you look at the name of the user and the last name is A and B. So in the profile, I could actually echo with PHP. This equal sign, by the way, is the shortcut for echo. So I'm just doing that shortcut. And then I will echo the session name. If I do that, I will get undefined index name because what I put in the session was not the name of the user. It was not the last name of the user. It was actually the whole user. And the user is an associative array and it's inside the variable called user. So first of all, I need to point to the user variable in profile. I will say user, and then I will save and test so you can see what happens. It says it's an array because the user has these fields, these keys. So now I'm going to point to the key called name. I will say from the user, point to the key called name. I say by test, welcome A, followed by, let's do an empty space, followed by, and then I will do the exact same thing for the last name. Save and test, welcome A and B. To finalize the session part, I will just create here 
a hyperlink to the logout page and over here it says logout when i click on logout the only thing i will do the system will do it will take me to the logout page that i am building now and this page is a really really simple page to build this page only has one job it actually works with the sessions so you have to do session start then it destroys the session meaning that the user doesn't have a login anymore it's gone and then it will usually always usually take you back to the login page that in this example is called index.php let me click on logout this code will be executed and i'm back in the login page if i try to log in nothing really happens if i do the correct email well a valid email for now and a valid password i am inside the profile page if i log out i'm out of the profile page if i manually go to profile.php i am back inside the login page the index page for this example to finalize this tutorial let me show you how i use the validate javascript library that i created validate.js i call it here and what i do is i will say that this button on click is going to return validate form this validate form is a function inside the validate.js and when i click on the button it will just submit it if it does find no errors and if it finds some errors it will not submit the form to validate for errors you need to do this you need to have an attribute called validate so i call it data-validate and this has to be a valid email address so as soon as i reload if the email is incorrect it tells you that the email is incorrect if you put a valid email actually this was green and that's why it submitted the page i have not validated the password yet to validate the password and by the way let's change the type to password so from now on whenever we do passwords here it should actually display that, that as dots like you see it there that's the type password so i want to data dash validate that's also an attribute that i invented for the library and then i will call this has to be text let me do this in the next line and the data dash min is going to be four so it has to have at least four characters let's refresh this page i will click login it says well it's not working fine data valley date sorry guys for the typo now we have the email and the password being validated i will provide the right email the email is valid but not the password and then i will do a password abc whatever login i am logged in i can log out and then i cannot log in again so in this example you have seen sessions with validation validation in the front end which is this with this simple library and validation in the back end which is this here all right guys I hope you like this tutorial please don't forget to subscribe like it and get notifications the code for all this will be in a link below the video so you can go and download it thank you for watching this video